the sixth addition to the DCEU. Aquaman made a surprisingly huge splash in theaters opening weekend and rivaled the likes of Spideyverse, Bumblebee, and <gasps> even Mary Poppins. Not only that, it comes across as the most vibrant and colorful DC movie since Batman and Robin. Okay, well maybe since Suicide Squad. As you may have noticed, the DCEU have been aiming for a rather dark and drab direction with its films. Man of Steel, Batman vs Superman, and the Justice League. Well this time, the wonderful James Wan and producers did a 180 and went in the opposite direction, making everything popping and pleasing to the eye, rivaling Marvel. Though it is as clear as the tide that surrounds it that the movie is trying damn hard to be a Marvel movie, while at the same time trying its hardest not to be. Uh, for instance, we have an heir of the throne to be, but must first defeat a sibling who not only believes that they are the rightful heir, but end up being the big bad at the end. That the hero must first lose and then defeat to earn their place as king, etc, etc. Black Panther much? It really just became a game of the throne. Okay, that was a bad joke. But speaking of bad jokes, you will find yourself laughing a lot more at this flick than with it. The humor in most of the jokes fall flat and can almost be called out before they happen. You might find yourself giggling more at the would-be sad and emotional moments as they also had layers of cheese and hammy hand to the palm moments. Now being me from the script to the acting, there was just something off. Not to say that Jason Momoa didn't leave some seats wet. I never thought I'd be uttering this phrase that Aquaman, the most flamboyant of the league, is more badass than Batman. All those epic look backs over the shoulder shots definitely made a purr like rumble among the audience. Oh, man. But it seemed to happen every chance it could. Yet without nitpicking too much, the acting was fantastic. My favorite being from Patrick Wilson, aka Ocean Master, with his intense stares to his gladiatorial screams to rally the Atlanteans. Roar! And of course, Amber Heard, Melting Hearts. It was the child actors that really brought the overall performance down a peg. Again, I found it to be laughable and lol'd almost every time the movie flashed back to a younger Arthur having an experience. As previously mentioned, may it be just the script or I have seen way too many action movies, it's predictable. Sometimes even line for line of dialogue, may it be jokes, responses, what's gonna happen immediately next or later, with one ongoing segue that had a very Michael Bay flow. Explosions! Booms and wabams! Whenever the scene needed a lift or a moment of discovery happened, you could expect that one split second of silence to be followed by something or someone crashing into the picture or exploding! Or, yeah, exploding. Now to think of it, there was a lot of explosions for an underwater adventure. Ah, enough negativity already. Let's get to the good stuff, shall we? Oh! Okay. On the topic of Marvel again, Aquaman decided to shy away from one of Marvel or any superhero staples and made this piece solely dedicated to the He-Man fish himself, with only one brief mention of events from a previous flick. There were no surprise cameos, team-ups, or even nods to any other DC heroes. And this prevailed, worked, and mainly kept the audience focused and interested on Arthur's story and world. And oh, what a world it is. It was. Something that rivaled Black Panther or even. Visually stunning is an understatement, especially while underwater. Every tiny detail is stimulating, from the fish to the underwater life, the glow-in-the-dark masterpieces to even just the one-on-one -on -one conversations. In a strange and pleasing way, the picture or camera have this subtle flow that acts as if it were filmed deep below or actually underwater. That hair. Oh. And even their voices sounded somewhat underwater. But the whole shebang doesn't just take place underneath. No, there were plenty of epic scenes up top too. All the sets and locations were so vast, wide, and random. From Italy to the Sahara Desert, you will have no idea where they're going to end up next. Well, except Atlantis. You can be damn sure. And you'll never want to leave. The use of giant sea creatures as vehicles and weapons, both mythical and pawn life blown up 20 sizes, was very clever and crafty. Lastly, the cloud wasn't that bad either. The costumes. Looking as if they leaped right out of the comics. 
From hero to villain, they were spot-on, accurate, yet unique. Opposed to other DCEU films where practical and dull, less vibrant designs were used, even to a point where we have William Dafoe in magical disappearing guyliner. No joke. One scene, he's Bret Michaels, and the next, he's wrinkly old Will. All right, enough of my squawking. This is the best DC comic film since The Dark Knight, which isn't saying much, but the DCEU is definitely starting to kick it up, taking the franchise in the right direction. And if I can give one tidbit of advice for viewing Aqua Dude, <clears throat> I mean Aquaman, is to go pee before you settle in your seat. I'm not joking, there's a lot of water. And you're not gonna wanna miss one second of it. Damn, will this film have you clenching? A solid 7.5 out of 10.